let's clear that off and go to the next one. And, and let's just write covalent formulas. And so once you've gone through and, and figured out how to go from the, the formula to the name, going from the name to the formula is really easy. And so let's start with this first one. This is dihydrogen monoxide. And so what's first? We have two hydrogens, so I'm going to write H2. And then we have one oxygen, and so that'd be H2O. And so instead of saying water, you could ask people if they could pass you a glass of dihydrogen monoxide, and they'll tell you that you're a total geek. Uh, let's go to the next one, dinitrogen trisulfide. That's going to be N2. And then we have S3, because we have three of these sulfides. Let's go to the next one, silicon dihydride. That's going to be Si. And then we're going to have H. Two. Or if we go down here, sulfur hexafluoride, that's just going to be sulfur F6. And so covalent writing the formula is really easy when we're going from the name to the actual formula. Okay, let's go to the last one, and that's writing ionic formulas. Ionic formulas, remember, are always written where you have the cation on this side and the anion on that side. And so let's go back. We've got lithium and oxide. Now, when you're going from the name to the actual formula of it, as far as ionic uh, formulas go, it's a little more complex because you have to make sure that it balances. And so we've got a lithium on this side and an oxide on that side. We want to go find that on here. So lithium has a plus one charge. Oxide has a two minus charge. And so when I write that out, I have to balance that. And so this is going to be Li. And so lithium had a one charge, so I'm going to have to put two of those with one oxygen. In other words, I need to balance it out. Let's go to the next one. We've got iron chloride. We know that iron has a three plus charge because this is iron three. So we better figure out what the charge of chloride is. So let's look back at our periodic table. Chloride's going to be way over here. It has a minus one charge, so let's go to that. So we've got a minus one charge on this side. And so we have to balance that out. So we know it's going to be Fe. We don't write the Roman numeral because we only write that in the name. And so how many of the chlorine atoms or chloride ions do we have to have? It's going to be FeCl3, if you were thinking that. Let's go to the next one, manganese 4 chromate. So that's going to have a 4 plus charge on the left side. And now we've got to figure out what chromate actually is. And so let's go to the periodic table. So chromate is going to be, let me find it on here. Chromate is going to be way up here. So chromate is going to be CrO4, and that's 2 minus. So CrO4, O4, and that's going to have a 2 minus charge. And so let's go forward for a second. So this is right here going to have a 2 minus charge on this side. And so how many of those do we have to have? Well, we're going to have to have two of the chromates. And so let's write manganese first. So that's going to be Mn. And now, all of this whole polyatomic anion has a two minus charge. And so this is where the parentheses come in handy. So I'm going to put a parentheses around CrO4. So this is CrO4, like that. And I have to have two of those to balance the charges. So I'm going to put a two right down here. And so that's what that subscript outside of the parentheses actually means. Let's go to the last one, zinc. So if we find zinc on our periodic table, zinc is going to be, and uh, it's way over here. So zinc has a 2 plus charge. And we're going to combine that zinc with thiocyanate. And so this has a 2 plus charge. And now let's find the thiocyanate. Thiocyanate uh, is going to be way over here. And that is SCN. And that has a 1 minus charge. And so let me go forward and figure out this last one. So this has a 1 minus charge on this side. And so what am I going to write for this? This is going to be zinc. And so that's going to be, let me go back for a second. It's going to be zinc, which has a 2 plus charge. And then I'm going to put my thiocyanate. But I'm going to have to have two of those because they have a 1 minus. So I'm going to put an SCN. And then I'm going to have to have two of those to balance it out. So now we've gone from writing the name to writing the formula. Now, why do we have to balance all of these out as I clear this? Remember, all of the atoms on here want to be a noble gas. In other words, the noble gases have full outer valence shells. 
And so if you think of it like a tennis ball, a tennis ball, um, if it had electrons around the outside of it, if you don't have eight, you're a very unstable tennis ball. And if we can either lose electrons and become a cation, we can become stable, or we can gain one to get an outer shell that's stable, um, then it's a happy atom. And so hydrogen has one electron, it'd love to get two, and it can share that with oxygen. And that's why water ends up being H2O. And so that's how you name things. Hopefully you can look at a uh, can of Mountain Dew now and you can figure out what's actually on it. And so I hope that was helpful.